I'm Dr. Anna Dale, and I teach philosophy at Mount St. Mary's University in Emmitsburg, Maryland. In this video, I will comment on a September 2016 column by George Anders on the Wall Street Journal's website. It, the column ran under the title, Good News, Liberal Arts Majors, Your Peers Probably Won't Out-Earn You Forever. In the column, Anders begins by uh, reporting the story of an English major, a woman who earned a master's degree in fine arts, who ended up taking a, re taking a relatively low-paying job at Groupon, but who worked her way up rapidly through the ranks of the company as it expanded and ended up leaving it to start her own firm before the age of 30. He suggests that her story is not entirely atypical in terms of the career path that many liberal arts graduates follow, after they complete their degree. He notes that liberal arts graduates often begin at lower average salaries, according to payscale.com, but that they gravitate toward higher paying fields and work their way up in the organizations they join, erasing most of the pay gap by mid-career. And by their peak earning years, liberal arts graduates are earning slightly more than their peers who got vocational degrees, though they still lag a bit behind the uh, graduates with science and engineering degrees, according to a study by the American Association of Colleges and Universities. One new piece of data that Anders brings to this conversation is data from a Brookings Institute study of census data. Brookings looked at the uh, lifetime earnings of the top 10% of earners from each college discipline. And what they found was that computer science majors, the top 10% of them over a lifetime, earned a, on average $3.2 million. But this actually was exceeded by philosophy majors, lifetime earnings of $3.46 million, and history majors at $3.75 million. Another point that Anders makes in his column is that employers will often tell surveys that they are looking for career-focused majors. But when employers are asked on the same surveys what resume traits they value most, they give a list of traits which are most often associated with the liberal arts. Teamwork, writing ability, oral communication ability, and problem-solving skill. Tech skills are listed 10th on these surveys. Now Anders gives many other quotes and examples and anecdotes that are worth reading, so I encourage you to click over and read the full article. Takeaways from the article, from my perspective, I think that Anders' report backs up some of my conclusions in other videos based upon the pay scale and AAC and U data, uh, indicating that while liberal arts graduates often start at a lower salary, they make up the difference by mid-career in terms of average pay, and if the Brookings Institute data is to be believed, then there really is no upper limit to the ability of exceptional graduates in any liberal arts field to compete in lifetime earnings with their STEM peers. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye.